There's a video here from Sunwaves of people raving that got me really. Um, cause I got, cause I'm thinking of this whole thing, right? I'm not really missing people. I have to be honest. I'm not. Like I don't really give a shit about that. I can be inside for a long time, but I'm actually missing just being in the rave, just around people. I'm not missing anyone, but I'm missing being around people. Um, you know, the sounds of the bass, right? The speakers going boom, boom, boom. Here, overhearing conversations that you might buy into and just, oh my god, she, you know, try yeah, the, the the seeing someone with the cool shirts, someone contemplating uh, complimenting your cool shirt, the lights, um, the DJs behind the booth, the hangers on, right? Like all of that, I'm missing. Even just the, the walk up to to the door, right? queuing for entry the club room it's just i'm missing all of that that's the thing that i'm missing the most and this video here that somebody uploaded from some waves in 2019 with martinez brothers and seth Troxler definitely gives me that kind of vibes of course for some people it's not going to be your type of rave i know it's not your type of festival it's a really popular festival in romania that i'm, I'm ricardo villalobos made famous because he i think this is where he might have co-signed um what's his name Oh, not not Zip, not Zap. What's his fucking name? I forgot his name. Here. But he co-signed one of the guys from him, from all that whole crew, Raresh and a few others. He co-signed them when he was there for the first time, and then that kind of took them to the next level. And it's kind of from then on, it's kind of gone on to become one of the big kind of uh, festivals or events during the whole festival season. And yeah, this video kind of encapsulates that for the most part. <laughs> funny it's a kind of similar it's like a dc 10 crowd it looks i don't know if there's just like overly male population in romania for the most part but it's mostly dudes with their phones up recording and shit and then you've got the, obviously the quintessential tent roof that you see on all the videos on somewhere that's what i don't remember from seeing videos from ricardo lobos from back in the day <laughs> That's what I missed the most about it. Just the kind of, you know, hands in the air, the bass thumping, um, everyone having a good time. And again, you're, you're hoping the landscape returns. You're hoping it kind of, oh, I don't know if there's going to be a change. That's the big debate in it. Whether or not a lot of these smaller independent venues will still be around once everything kind of settles down. That's up for debate. But I think something I've been thinking about the other day is that even if they don't hang around, that we just have the kind of mid to higher capacity clubs available. I think they're still going to be the position where they probably can't afford to get, you know, the top 50 years from RA list or poll to come down and play. They're still going to require a lot of the mid and lower level guys and girls to play just to kind of just to kind of tie them over until they're able to get some sort of money through the door. But I think that will be a good opportunity and also give uh, it will be a good opportunity for the DJs themselves who don't usually play at that place to get a chance to play because they've got no other option they have to pick the kind of cheap option and also be a chance for the dj themselves to kind of show and prove and show that they can play on that level because i think it's similar to football i think there's a lot of players in championship who can obviously play in the premier league but a lot of premier league clubs aren't willing to take the chance right because even though a championship player might be cheaper than buying a player on the continent, it depends if they're British based, but let's say even if they they are uh, they are guaranteed they're kind of like like for like, you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna wanna go to somebody who's basically proved it for longer, maybe playing in a higher division, quote unquote, on paper, because your job's on the line, right? And I think a lot of these clubs are the same. A lot of these clubs, especially the bar owners or the event managers, I think a lot of their KPIs are basically um, you know, really come down to who comes through the door you know if you get hired in may and your first june, your first event your first event is in june 
but it's not as well attended as the event of the other of your predecessor in April, you're gonna be in for a hard time in your job and it? it's gonna be um it's gonna be really uh squeaky bum time. So you can't allow yourself to be in a position where like hopefully it works out. You can't book an underground DJ you just found on SoundCloud or someone that emailed you in. You have to pick your friends who you know um what they can do and you also have to pick the people who are kind of tried and tested right who've kind of been there before in your city you've kind of done the numbers you know you can promote the fuck out of it online they've got a good social media game all that sort of shit is going to play into it but i think in in dire straits because they won't have a lot of options available to them a lot of these events owners a lot of these sorry uh, bookers and event plans will just have to make do with what's available and you're hoping that works the other scenario is that a lot of the smaller ones stay around or stay alive just because they're able to kind of you know like i mentioned before they're able to maybe um utilize their spaces for like live streaming events hire it out for radio djs to come in or djs to come and record their mixes like similar to like a pirate radio imagine if you could do that imagine if clubs offered up their spaces during the day um like time slots you could go in and record your set in their nightclub like a pirate radio station and then be able to stream it live show people and have that as part of your reel right off part of your cv that'd be pretty cool isn't it obviously not everyone could do it it could probably be, you could probably price it out so you make sure you only get good people playing i don't know it doesn't really matter really it's just like a little money on a, that way they could stay they could stay afloat so once the doors open they, they could then because i think uh, it was that kind of booking of the top 50 djs was also seeping into a lot of the un- underground kind of smaller clubs because they got to a point where they just had to make money so i think now because people are going to be more open to maybe because you're you're hoping this is all kind of under the assumption that people will want to go out once everything's settled down it might not be like that people might just get people might just be afraid for a year and not come out at all right and then you know it's a whole different conversation but if people decide to kind of you know um keep calm and carry on right the kind of uh the british mantra right if they decide to kind of adopt that kind of myth or that kind of um ideology then it could potentially see there being more people out than there are clubs available to to accommodate them and if that's the case it gives these people who throw these kind of you know um independent underground kind of events a chance to really be crafty and do something a little bit different you know um really try to offer something a little bit interesting and the best way to do that is to book people who aren't necessarily well known and give them a platform to shine that allows them to bring in their friends you build a real community there a real scene because you know you're that imagine you, you books this girl that no one knows from east ham and she smashes it right and then she suddenly brings in all her friends who have been supporting her for ages but they never saw her given a chance on that kind of level she's gonna she's gonna owe the world to you right they're gonna be so loyal to you because you gave them the opportunity and it also allows you to brag about it because if then that person becomes the next nina kravitz you can say you were the first person to give her a chance so it kind of works both ways i don't really see the, the kind of the risk in it really but i don't know a lot of these people a lot of it is money and a lot of it comes down to the fact that there's a lot of money at, at, on the line a lot of these clubs they can't afford to just go out and just book some underground person on soundcloud i know but i'm hoping with the stuff happening now it's definitely changing people's view on how to kind of do these things and there's a lot more of a different kind of take on how to do it properly but this video definitely made me catch the feelings Can't go wrong with Seth Trucks and Martin Brothers. I think I missed that, right? Was a black guy there? Madness I'm about to say the black guys go to Romania. There is, yeah, there's one there. Madness, that's sick. That's going to be a long time until we're there again, aren't we, friends? <laughs> so let's not look at that too much. Um, 